Hello again, this is Rick. I'm the lead instructor with Fathom Academy and the Chief Operations Officer. And again, I'm working from home. Today, you get to see my home office. Keep in mind, as my lovely assistant Riley is panning around my home office, if I'm ever quarantined at work, this is where my wife will gleefully throw me and lock me in with no key. So, this evening, real quick, I just want to talk about a few things that I like to call my mantras of Swiftwater Rescue. First mantra, I'm going to refer to my notes there over here to my right, is pre-planning. Pre-planning is key, it is huge, it governs almost everything you do in Swiftwater Rescue. My mantra for this is pre-planning does not stop until you enter the water because things change, environments change, any sort of thing can change. So pre-planning, first off, don't just include yourself and your agency in the pre-planning process. Include everybody that may be involved in a large-scale event. So this is going to include not just fire departments, law enforcement, EMS, but it's going to include people that are going to evacuate large scale populations like school buses, things like that. Where are you going to shelter them? High schools, churches, so now your independent school districts are involved. How are you going to feed them? So you're looking at Salvation Army, Red Cross. If you're in Texas, Texas Baptist Men's Association is an excellent source. Um, other agencies to keep in mind, Road and Bridge, they are great at going out and letting you know, hey, this bridge is underwater. Doesn't take a required responder to tell you that. Anybody can tell you that. Uh, now, so pre-planning, back to that. Write everything down and update it continuously because things change. As populations grow, the water goes different places or comes from different directions. This is called putting concrete down where there used to be dirt. Concrete does not absorb water. It moves water other places and causes us problems that weren't there a year before. Uh, the other thing is, don't wait for training to invite you. Host training. Host training for everybody. Now, that's the best way to get people to do training is just host it and invite every agency known to man and make sure everybody that you invite has a role to play. So these can be large scale exercises. Don't just do, hey, we're doing throwback training. But let's talk about where everybody plugs into this under an emergency management and incident command system. Okay, so second thing, this is the biggest one. We never, ever, ever want to get into the water. Most of the fatalities that occur in swift water rescue are not the victims are gonna be the rescuers that are either under trained or they pushed a bad position. We want to do as many rescues as humanly possible with our feet on firm ground. Not necessarily dry ground because it's raining, but firm ground. If we do have to get in the water, we want to be basically attached to a retrieval system where if it goes wrong, we can be pulled back in. So we don't want to get in the water. Now, that being said, I teach swift water rescue. My goal when I train you is to make you comfortable in that environment along with, are you comfortable? Yes, still don't want you getting in there. We don't want to get in the water. Third thing, swift water rescue. I'm gonna keep this short and to a point because it's a lot more effective when I'm teaching you, but swift water rescue is a game of inches, okay? First and foremost, you're gonna be operating with a limited amount of equipment in a very unique environment. Prime example, 50 foot throw bag. I don't care how far you can throw a throw bag, you're not getting 50 feet out of that. So plan accordingly. Don't waste rope. You don't have extra rope to spend. You don't have extra bodies to spend, which is why I say don't get in the water. A lot of times what will happen is you take your best rescuer swimmer, and over a 48-hour period, that's the same guy that gets in the water. It's always the best swimmer. You know, I'm not going to put this guy. He's my best rigger. He's tying ropes. So I don't want to put him in the water. I'm going to put my best swimmer in the water. Eventually, your best swimmer gets fatigued, and he misses by half an inch comes up short where he gets hurt or the victim gets hurt or they both get hurt. It's a game of inches. So train everybody up to that level, but remember it's a game of inches. So the next one, the KISS method, which I don't like. KISS means keep it simple, stupid. I don't like the word stupid. I hate it. We're not stupid. Okay. This is a learning environment. No such thing as stupid. So I use the KISP. 
K-I-S-P, which is keep it simple, please. If you keep it simple, you're able to maximize a limited amount of equipment. Come to my class and I'll show you what I mean because the last scenario I'll give you, you'll be able to do it quicker than any other scenario with a minimal amount of equipment. That's amazing. You'll be like, oh, now I get it. So, all right, next one. So, we talk a lot about anxious people, combative people, people that are not cooperating in an environment like this. So, act the part when you show up to rescue your victim. And what I mean by that is be cool, be nice, and be confident. Very, very easy things to do. But if they believe that you know what you're doing and that you got this, they're going to play into that. So be cool, be nice, be confident when you're interacting with your victims. There's no need to do combative victim management by you being combative yourself. I like to think of it as we are the London Police Department. We are going to get this done with a kind word and nothing else. Again, come teach my class and I will show you what I'm talking about, how you can get control of a victim without having to, for lack of a better term, get hands on with them. Last but not least, write everything down. Pre-plans, after action reviews, documentation, documentation, documentation is huge, especially if this is a state or federal disaster declaration. If you want to have 10 throw bags replaced and you didn't write down you lost 10 throw bags during the course of this and nobody's going to give you any money for that. The other big thing in, is, and this is huge for your departments, is your OT budget is going to get basically just annihilated during an event like this. And if you don't keep good accountability of your overtime hours for federal or state reimbursement dollars, it's kind of like nobody take vacation, nobody can call in sick. So document, 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 that's huge. Before the incident, during the incident, and after the incident. And real quick on that, there's two types of reviews of a major incident. The first is what we call a hot wash. You guys are in the fire service, maybe in law enforcement, you're familiar with that. It's like immediately after the call, the group of people that were there at that scene get together and say, hey, for lack of a better term, what worked and what didn't work, what can we do, let's make some notes and let's go on to the next incident. Then the after action review. Give yourself a week or two after everything has gone back to normal. Let everybody that was involved compile their notes, their thoughts, ideas, and everything else and then come together in one large setting. This is not just the rescuers. This is everybody that was involved. Go back to your plea planning your school bus people, your ISDs, Salvation Army, Texas Baptist Men's, Red Cross, everybody that was involved needs to be brought into the table what did and did not work. And the one thing that will come up in every, every after action review is going to be communications. Unfortunately, there's nobody here to answer the question. Okay, so let me wrap up with a couple of things. Uh, first off, this is my rocking chair. This is my retirement plan. You'll notice all the books around me. Hopefully someday I'll actually get a chance to read most of these. And if you can correctly on my YouTube channel for Fathom Academy, identify this flag that is on the chair behind me, I will give you a free slot in the next technician level class. $600 value, yours free of charge. My coronavirus dedication to you. Everybody, please stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Rain season's coming. Let's prepare in spite of everything that's going on. Thank you. Take care.